So today is the 5th of July and I've long last been able to get someone to video for me instead of doing self-videoing. So I have my uh, volunteer Josh here on Sunday to help me video. And I'm now going to do a special video of not all, but some of the projects that I've been doing. Many of you keep asking on my videos, will you show us whether this will survive and what has happened to the thing you did with this tree or that tree. And so this is the first chance I have had to show you the results of what I've been doing. So let's begin with the ficuses. If you remember me pruning these ficuses really, really hard, I chopped about 30 centimeters back from the branch and took off all the sub branches and see how they are budding from the old wood. Look at the trunk of this tree. They're budding from everywhere. So you see how they're budding, keep budding. Now this one is not a grafted one. So this has got new fresh leaves. And this one was given a real severe chop. And just see the buds coming. You remember I used the uh, saw to chop it. And then that encourages little back budding. So all this is happening. So not a single branch has died. Every single branch is well alive and they're going to send out shoots. So this is the result of doing this to these great big ficuses, the hard pruning I did this year. So what I will show you next are the results of various air layerings that I've done. Now air layerings always fascinate people and I am very fond of not showing off, but doing challenging things like making air layerings from very thick trunks. Now this great big beast here, believe it or not, is an air layering. This is an English elm and the original bonsai has been growing for the last, I would say, 30 years on the nursery and it's about 10 feet tall. So because it was too big, I air layered the top four feet. And while I've been growing this tree, I've been cutting it here and there to get all these twists and bends. So this is a ready-made bonsai because I've been, prune, been pruning it while it's been growing on the tree and I airlit this. And Josh remembers that last June when he came for the first time, he helped me take the air layering off because it's too heavy for me to do. And look at that. Look at that air layering. And the moss is still here. Look at all that moss. And that is where it was cut off from the trunk. Mm. Look at that. Look at the roots. And I have now a ready-made tree which I can put in a large training pot. So that's a job for tomorrow. But it's just to show you the air layer. And I also air layer other things. And because I'm very fond of flowering trees, I will show you this is a large magnolia that I earlier. I'm very fond of magnolia. It's the grandiflora. And look at the size of this earlier. You stand back, Josh. You can just see the size of this tree. You think I'm crazy making air layers as large as this, but I'm not as crazy as you think because with an air layer like this, I've got a ready-made large tree. And look at the roots on that. Look at the roots. My God, that is some root from an air layering. <laughs> air layering. And this was separated in, I think again, August of last year. And now this is going to go in a big flower pot because it can't stay in this pot forever. Uh, it's got to be put in a ordinary flower pot with ordinary compost. So that's another air layering. While we're talking about air layerings, I've got so many air layerings that we did. Although this year, I must confess, I haven't been doing many air layerings because I frankly haven't had the time. Now this one I have shown you in that little evening walk I did. Now this was probably the largest or the longest air layering I have ever, ever made. And it was done with tongue in cheek. And I remember when Jack helped me bring it from the nursery. We cut it off only in September of last year. September! And now it's uh, 5th of July, so we took it off only about, what is it, uh, nine months ago. It was an air layering separated nine months ago. And here we are. 
Let's take some of the weeds off. It's still growing in moss. It's still growing in moss. And if I can just yank it out of the pot, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Give me a sec. Let's try. No, let's, I don't want to damage it. But this is an airing, I can assure you. I just want to show the state of the roots. I think it's stuck in this. Uh, you see some roots in here. Stuck in the roof of the greenhouse. Let's tip it to the side. Let's see. Is it tied? I think it's tied, is it? Yeah, it's tied with wire just here and there. Tied with wire. Okay, tied with wire here and there. I will return to this because I've got to take it out of the pot and then show you the roots. I got it out of the pot with Josh's help. And as you can see the size of this air layering, look at the height. Look at it. Have you ever seen an air layering as big as this? And now, Josh, if you come near and take a view of the roots that are formed, there should be lots of roots. Are there lots of roots there? There's not lots, there's, there's nice roots, healthy roots. Gosh, and the bit of plastic, I think, is still there. Yep. So I put it back in the pot because it's got compost at the base. Lots of roots. But I think I can continue to keep it in here. So this is how it's going to continue growing. I won't touch the the moss, because if I disturb the moss, it'll, it may break the leaves. So we'll put it back in the pot. Have you got the tree, huh? Yeah. Hold it. I think this compost is quite good. As you can see, this is just the ordinary bark growing in there. Okay. Now, I don't know whether you can lift the tree. I think it's two men. Can you try and lift it? Back in the pot. It's one hell of a tree. Air layering. Air layering gone mad. One great big air layering. Josh is strong. Back in the pot. And we're going to let it grow for the rest of the summer to establish more roots. When it's got more roots, then we will put it in a much larger pot. I think we'll have to take it back in there and tie it up again because the tree can't stand up on its own. It's too weak. And I then take it outside because if I take it outside, the environment is not as conducive to growth as in the greenhouse. As we say, the greenhouse is our intensive care unit it will grow more so this was just to pull it out to show you how successful this air layering is and for the future if i wanted to keep this as a large garden tree i could keep it as a large garden tree but if not i can make a bonsai with a big trunk here make a bonsai out of it or make several more air layerings so i did this really just to prove a point to show you that it is possible to uh, produce air layerings of this size. So I'm going to switch the camera off. We're going to tie it back to the uh, supports of the greenhouse because the tree can't support itself. And we will show this to you perhaps uh, another few months later to see how much more root it has produced. So there we go with this one. I'm going to bring this magnolia to pot up because it was growing in that pot since we separated it from the tree and it's only growing in sphagnum moss. So now we've got to put proper soil. So I'll put it into the next size flower pot, which is this. I don't want to put it in anything too big. So we put it in there. That's, and this is just garden soil with bits of grit in it. Now we want the roots to mesh. I'm not going to disturb the root. I once read in someone else's book that when they do air layerings, they tend to tease the moss ball out. Now that is completely wrong, I think. It, it's not advisable because, because if you tease the roots out, you are bound to damage the roots. So what I do instead, I just put it in soil and let the roots spread. Now this is only going to be like a nursery or garden tree. I'm going to graze some of the garden. And I'm just going to put it in soil. And hopefully in three months it will fill this pot completely with proper roots.
Hello. So the yeah the transition is going to be quite important. If you transition it wrong, then you damage the roots, and that all your efforts will be wasted. All your efforts in air layering will be wasted. Put both soil on that side. Put it in the greenhouse maybe for another couple of weeks more because it will generate more roots. I will probably put it in the corner and that will be it. Now this is a Siberian elm and it grew for a long time. I may have an earlier shot of this because this we did for Josh. This is Josh's tree now. And he found it in the field and it was completely rotten. And it's still the original trunk, but it hollowed out completely. And we do get trees like this in nature. There are oak trees in the UK and Britain which have this character. And it resembles an oak tree. So although it's an elm, it's being made as an oak tree. And just to show you the natural hollow trunk. And we save something from nothing. So this will become a nice sponsor as well. So it just gives you some idea as to what you can do with the trees. And you see how nice it's callousing in. And that tree will survive for many, many years to come. So we've done four air layerings on this tiny little Shishigashira. And the little balls are no bigger than a golf ball and we will see how it roots. I reckon in two months it should root and we will get all together, including the parent tree, five shishis from this one tree. So you can do airlings from any size tree. Now let's look at some of the other things we did. Now this is a hornbeam that I've been working on for the last three years. When I dug it out of the ground it had a lot of thick branches and all the thick branches have been uh, cut off completely so that we grow tin branches from scratch and again you might find it incredible or unbelievable but this branch here that I'm unwiring was grown from nothing last year this is just one year's growth all this is one year this grew that long last year and I cut it back and this has grown in the last two months so it's much too long so all the new branches I've been grown from scratch and all I've done is to cut everything back and then start again. So this branch also is only two years old. This branch is two years old and it was wired last year. So usually with a thick trunk I prefer to have uniform branches so I cut everything off and start again. So that is the best way to do it. So. Uh, it's been partially wired and I'm going to just prune it back into a conical shape and this has grown in the last year this has all grown in the last year So if you want an easy tree to experiment with, the hornbeam, the European hornbeam is certainly the one for you. It is so easy to do. And in fact, they are so vigorous that these wires were only put on last summer, barely a year, it's completely set. And if I don't want it to bite too much, I'm going to take the wires off. So one year and the wire's done its job. They sucker like mad, so you have to be careful, keeping the front open. See the natural tendency of branches is to spring upwards, you don't want that. With bonsai we want the branches to be horizontal, so anything springing upwards we get rid of, or wire downwards.
So I reckon in three years from a stump, you can get a very, very plausible or credible bonsai. So right in front of your eyes, I'm going to do this. And this is the new leader, so I will cut it there and do that the new leader from there. There you go. So how easy is that? So that's well on its way to becoming a nice bonsai with all uniform branches. There you go. And I'm going to take you to the field to show you that great big, I think it was eight to 10 foot high tree that we dug up with the digger. And we will show you the progression of that tree. So we were just showing you those air layering of the magnolia trees. This is the tree and other magnolias that I have and I air layer them all the time. And look at the beautiful flowers. The scent is absolutely divine. So all these branches are potential candidates for air layering. So nothing ever wasted here. dug out with the digger and lifted it what is it at least 10 foot tall and it had no branches or twigs look at all the shoots growing everywhere you can take your pick there are so many branches that we can select what we want and start making the bonsai from that all the branches so we have endless choice endless choice so I don't want them growing in the wrong place because they'll make what is called inverse taper. So who says they are not uh, biggest trees? And we took it out with hardly any root and it survived. I don't think it is my magic touch. It's just that the species is such that they're very easy to develop. So easy to develop. I'm not going to do the whole tree because it would take me a long time to do it. So again, choosing the branches in the right place. You see even at the base, it's suffering, look at it. From every nook and cranny, look at it, all these new shoots coming from the very old wood. That's the beauty of these deciduous trees. Millions of shoots, absolutely millions of shoots. But we don't want them all. We want to channel the energies into the right branch that will be used for making the bonsai. I think I may have to wire some of them to direct them in the... See, this is going in the wrong direction, so I'll take that off completely. Going upwards, I don't want that. So call it a Niwaki or whatever you wish, but this is one hell of a tree. to get a ladder to go higher up. So we don't want to let the tree waste the energy putting out branches in the wrong place. We want them all going out in the right direction, in the right place. So that's what we do to these trees. As I said, I need a ladder to go higher up so you can see how the branches are formed. Now that one I may tie down with a bit of string rather than wire and tie that down and get the branches hanging down. So look at this great big juniper. Some of you will remember some months ago when I was uh, carrying that great big log splitter 
and I nearly bust my gut trying to split this tree. See the size of it. This was a huge juniper that had grown for about 30 or more years and it had a funny V shape like a root sign. And what I decided to do was to split that tree into two because the V didn't do anything. You could never make a twin trunk. So this is it. You can still see where we split it with the log splitter. That's where we cut it. And many of you thought this tree would die, but look at it, it's going well. It's going very well. Now, what would you do with a tree like this? You might well ask me. If I continue to grow it and make it strong, I can make it into a large juniper garden tree because it's got a nice shape. But one of the other alternatives, if you come close, if I want to make a bonsai like this size, I can use just this part and use this part. You know, like a long uh, one-sided tree coming here. So this would make a nice bonsai with this at the leader coming there. And I could air the, layer these bits and get shorter trees out of this. So that may be a good option. If I lay it here, earlier it here, I can get three air layers and then use the bits where I've cut off to make driftwood. So that would be a very good solution for this tree. Now, what about the other half? Let's come and have a look at the other half. We'll see it. Uh, that survived as well. If you can go in from that side, That is just going to go that side and this is the other tree or the other half so this other half is doing extremely well too and about the same height and got a lovely bend here so again if i didn't want a very straight trunk there's always the possibility of making this into a big garden tree but if we were to air it here we would get a nice tree with all those complicated bends there and hopefully it sprouts from the hard wood look at it sprouting from here already sprouting from the really old hard wood so you could still get look at this one see look at this chunk from here look at the buds from here and who said they don't sprout from hard wood they do sprout from hard wood so this is the uh, tree after a few months it's doing extremely well so nothing ever dies with me now let's show you some forsythia that I split. So these are the subjects of some more things that I split with the great big log splitter. This was that, uh, I think it's a black thorn. So this, you can see it was split there. And all these shoots have grown, they're so vigorous. So the more you prune, the more ramification you get. I try not to let the branches from low down grow too much otherwise they take over and the top dies so that is going there this also was split over here as you can see there it was split and all these long shoots about two foot long this has grown and then the forsyth here the yellow flowering trees look at that trunk look at that trunk and look at all these two, three foot long. I haven't watered it for the last couple of days. I need to get round to here to water it, but it's certainly going extremely well. In fact, every shoot, even this one is growing. Do you think it's dead? It's not. That's growing. And all these are growing. So all this has taken. So this will be ready to pot up into separate trees. I put one, two, three, four of the ones I split into one big pot, but they will need to come into smaller pots. And then one final thing before I end this video is the one that I did with the car pressure washer. washer. Let's have a look at that one. Now, do you recognize this one? This was a famous tree where we used the car pressure washer to wash all the roots out. This was a field maple. Look at it now. It's absolutely complete. All in the space of one year. That's all it took. And it's a beautiful tree. Beautiful complicated roots. And we're showing the tree to its best uh, facets. All the best points of this tree are shown. And look at it from this side. So healthy. Such a lot of leaves and foliage and twigs. All I do is keep tipping the 
ends of the shoots so that I get ramification. There you go. So I hope you enjoyed this follow-up of all the little projects that I've done. And uh, don't despair, keep at it. So here's a follow-up of some earlier projects that I did. If you remember, these were two beech trees that someone wanted for nothing. And here I am, I put it together and was, is it four or five months later? The two trees are growing very strongly and it's blended very well. I can show you the other side. I think this is more the back side. The front is the other way. So there you go, that's the end of another project. Now I'm just going to show you the beach that I rescued from the building site in June of, uh, I think the two years ago, was it, or last year? And here they are. One year later and they're all perfect. Of the 36 I collected, I think only about four of them didn't make it. Yeah, one of them is that one. That one didn't make it. But all the others have made it. And they're all lush with growth. All absolutely lush. So they certainly don't seem to have suffered very much. So I look forward to making the bonsai in the future. They've all got beautiful trunks and beautiful leaves. And uh, that will be the subject of future YouTube videos. So there you are. This is a review of all the projects that I've done. And I hope you've enjoyed this one.